today, according to UNICEF, at least 2.6 billion people lack adequate sanitation, while 1.1 billion people live without clean drinking water, period. Water is the key component in all of our daily lives, no matter where we live. Not only for human use, but for energy, industry, agriculture, and livestock. Now, if you look at the Earth, you will notice that over 75% of our blue planet is water. The problem is, only 3% of that water is fresh water. Over 260 river basins are shared by two or more countries, and most of these rivers are without defined legal or institutional arrangements. Consider the Aral Sea, for example, located in Central Asia. The name Aral Sea is actually translated into Sea of Islands, referring to over 1,534 islands that once existed. Today, the Aral Sea is down to 10% of its original size. The same thing is happening in other areas that were once flourishing are now turning into desert. A report titled, Avoiding Water Wars, Water Scarcity in Central Asia's Growing Importance for Stability in Afghanistan and Pakistan, was recently done by the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. In it, it focused on rising water tensions that could destabilize Central and South Asia. The implications of a water shortage has already caused aggravated demand for agriculture and power generation, according to the report. Water without a doubt is going to be a huge issue along with oil throughout this century. In the U.S., the world's largest body of fresh water, the Ogallala Aquifer, an underground lake that extends from the Colorado Rockies to South Dakota, going all the way down to the Texas Panhandle, with a range of 50 to 300 feet of depth. This water resource is what has made America's plains the breadbasket of the world. Unfortunately, like an oil well, this won't last forever. The Ogallala used to have an average depth of 240 feet. Today, its average depth is just 80 feet. Recently, a story done in Texas about a town named Happy, who has simply run out of water for its farms. What once was a booming town that relied on the Ogallala Aquifer has now seen its depths of underground water fall between 0 to 50 feet. Many wells are completely dry and farmers have been forced to hand over their land to the government's Conservation Reserve Program in exchange for grants. The U.S. Department of Agriculture recently stated, The supply is going to run out and the plains will become uneconomical to farm. 60 years is what the U.S. Department of Agriculture gives it. This is a scary thought when you think about the way we have built cities, towns, and homes around something that is simply unsustainable. Consider the Colorado River as well. A river that used to run into the Pacific. Not anymore. By the time the water fills the pools of Vegas and irrigates and provides drinking water throughout the West, not a drop of water makes it into the ocean. Of course, we can't help but comment on how it is government who essentially planned people to live in the middle of nowhere, to live in deserts. If a free market would have reigned, we would see a much more practical living condition with very little middle of the desert living, not only relying on cheap oil, but the relocation of precious water. While researching the water crisis, FutureMoneyTrends.com came across studies about how in some places in Africa, so much water has been pulled out of the ecosystem in order to bottle it and send it around the world, some towns have become deserts. As the world population grows, the water crisis will become front page news. According to the consulting company McKinsey & Company, by 2030, global water demand will be 40% greater than today's accessible, reliable, environmentally sustainable supply. FutureMoneyTrends.com members should have no doubt that this is 100% tied into agriculture and rising food price inflation. 71% of global water withdrawals today go to irrigating our food. 
The U.S. government has screwed us with subsidies that are handed out to farmers who plant in areas that need an excessive amount of water. Subsidies are also handed out in misguided attempts to turn food into fuel, something that in our opinion is not only driving food costs up, but is wasting precious water resources. Like oil, it takes water for many goods. A cotton t-shirt, 400 gallons. Denim jeans, 1,800 gallons. A car, 39,000 gallons. A board of lumber, 5.4 gallons. A barrel of beer, 1,500 gallons. Gallon of paint, 12 gallons. One ton of steel, 62,000 gallons. A piece of paper, 2.6 gallons. Consider how much water it takes to grow our food, feed our animals, and ourselves.